Bandora et al. 1961. Transmission of Aggression. Background. One of the main areas of psychological research is social psychology, which is interested in studying human behaviour in a social context and how people learn behaviours from others. In the mid-20th century, one of the dominant theories developed by researchers in the area of social psychology was social learning theory, which proposes that people can learn behaviour by watching others, also known as vicarious learning. Social learning theory assumes that when someone watches another person get rewarded or punished for a particular behaviour, they will learn whether that behaviour should be conducted or not. Previous research has provided evidence that children will often imitate behaviour that has been demonstrated by an adult via vicarious learning. However, much of the research had only demonstrated this effect occurred while an adult was still present, and had not tested whether imitation still occurs when the adult is not present. The study by Mandura et al. therefore wanted to test the prevalence of imitative learning in children by exposing them to behaviour demonstrated by an adult model, and then placing them in a novel situation without the model present. Aims The study by Mandura et al. aimed to investigate whether the imitation of behaviour that is learned through vicarious learning can occur in the absence of a model. The researchers had four main hypotheses. Number one. Children that observe models who exhibit aggressive behaviour will be significantly more likely to display aggressive acts that resemble the model's behaviour compared with children who are shown non-aggressive models or no models. Number two, children shown non-aggressive models will exhibit significantly fewer aggressive acts than children who observed an aggressive model or no model. Number three, boys will imitate significantly more aggressive acts than girls. Number four, children will imitate behaviour that is displayed by a model of the same sex more than behaviour displayed by a model of the opposite sex. Sample. The participants of this study consisted of 72 children between the ages 3 and 6 years old. From the nursery school of Stanford University, the sample was divided equally between girls and boys, with 36 of each. The children were pre-assessed for aggressiveness by the experimenters and a nursery school teacher, who were familiar with the children. Based on these scores, the participants were put into groups of three, with each group consisting of children that had similar levels of aggression. The groups were then randomly assigned to one of the three conditions. Methodology. The study was a laboratory experiment, which used matched pairs, or matched participants. Design. With each participant taking part in one of three conditions. The three independent variables consisted of the type of model, whether the child observed an aggressive adult model, a non-aggressive adult model, or no model in the control condition, the sex of the model, whether they were a male or female, and the sex of a child, whether they were a boy or a girl. The dependent variable was the amount of aggressive behaviour shown by the children in the third phase of the experiment. This was measured by the model, and also sometimes a secondary researcher, who both observed the participants through a one-way mirror so that they would not be aware that they were being watched. The observations were structured using a time sampling method, with regular observations being made at five second intervals. The behaviour was classed into three categories, imitative aggressive responses, partially imitative responses, and non-aggressive imitative responses. Procedure. The study was conducted in three separate stages, designed to enable children to adequately observe the model, then provide an opportunity for them to display any imitative behaviour. In stage one, each participant was taken to a room individually, and then invited to play with a potato print and picture stickers for approximately 10 minutes. During this time, in the aggressive model condition, the model entered the room and started assembling a tinker toy set, but after around one minute, they turned to a clown doll referred to as Bobo, and spent the remaining duration of stage one attacking the doll and expressing verbally aggressive utterances at it. The model would use a mallet in some cases, and in others, threw the doll in the air. In the non-aggressive condition, the model simply continued to play with the Tinker toy set and ignored the Bobo doll, and the control group did not participate in stage one at all. For the second stage of the experiment, the children were individually taken to another room and subjected to what the researchers referred to as mild aggression arousal. They were initially allowed to play with toys that were considered high-end and attractive to children. But after around two minutes, the experimenter confiscated the toys, telling the child that they were the experimenter's best toys and that they had reserved them for other children to play with. However, they were told that they could play with any other toys in the next room. In stage three, the children were individually taken to another room, which contained toys that were both aggressive and non-aggressive. Examples of aggressive toys included a three-foot-tall Bobo doll, which was identical to the one the model had used in the aggressive condition, a mallet, a pegboard, and dart guns. The non-aggressive toys included three teddy bears, toy cars, a tea set, crayons, and plastic farm animals. 
The experimenters observed the children through a one-way mirror for a total of 20 minutes, with regular observations concerning the participants' behaviour made at five-second intervals, resulting in 240 response units per child. Behaviour was categorised into either imitative aggressive responses, partially imitative responses, and non-aggressive imitative responses. Results The observations generated from the third stage of the experiment showed that children in the aggressive condition who had observed the aggressive model in stage 1 were significantly more likely to exhibit imitative aggression responses than children in the non-aggressive or control groups. In all conditions, boys were more likely to display aggressive physical acts than girls, including imitative physical aggression, but there was little difference in the level of verbal aggression between boys and girls. Among the children who were in the aggressive condition, there was more partial and non-imitative aggression than those in the other two conditions. However, the difference between conditions for non-imitative aggression was not significant. Children who were in the non-aggressive condition showed relatively little aggression, although the results were not always significantly less compared to those from the control group. In relation to the researchers' hypothesis about the sex of the model, it was found that girls who had participated in the aggressive model condition displayed more physically aggressive acts if the model was male but more verbally aggressive acts if the model was female. Overall, it was found that boys are more likely to imitate same-sex models than girls, and the data did not show strong support for girls imitating same-sex models, meaning that the behaviour of the male model appeared to exert more of an influence. Conclusions The main conclusions drawn by the researchers was that children will in fact display imitative aggression and non-aggressive behaviour by an adult model, even when the child thinks that the model is not present when the imitation occurs. The researchers said that this shows that children are able to learn aggression through observing another person's behaviour, which supports social learning theory. They found from the results that behaviour that is modelled by a male model has greater influence on children's physical behaviour, regardless of whether those children are boys or girls, and that children are likely to learn verbal aggression from a same-sex adult. Evaluations The study was a laboratory experiment with standardised procedures and controlled conditions. Before the experiment took place, the participants were rated for levels of aggression and matched to ensure that the results were not skewed by a disproportionate amount of children with a relatively high level of aggression being allocated to one condition. During the observation in stage 3, the experimenters used structured time sampling to measure the behaviour of children at 5 second intervals. A strength of using this method is that it provides reliable data, as this method can be easily replicated by other researchers using fixed categories, just as the researchers did in this study. A disadvantage of a structured observation is that there is potentially a lack of validity. The children's behaviour may not fit into any of the categories, or overlap several categories, making it difficult to quantify. The sample of children was sourced entirely from the nursery school at Stanford University. Therefore, it's possible to argue that they were not entirely representative of a more general population. For example, children in a different social class might display aggression differently compared to those in this experiment. Moreover, the study could lack ecological validity due to the controlled nature of the experiment. The models used in the experiment were complete strangers to the children involved, which is very different from a more normal form of modelling, which would occur within a child's family with a family member. The study was also a snapshot study, meaning that it's not possible to know what long-term effects the modelling had on children's behaviour, or whether the imitative behaviour which was displayed was just a one-off due to the novelty of the situation. There was also a few ethical considerations within the study, such as the fact that some of the children were placed in a room with an adult who acted physically and verbally aggressive with a doll, hitting it repeatedly with a mallet. The children may have felt unsafe, scared and confused, especially since they had a limited understanding of the situation due to the use of deception. The long-term behavioural effects of the study are not known. However, it's possible that the consequences of the imitative aggression displayed by the children in the experiment could have continued outside of the laboratory.